The Toronto Blue Jays won their second consecutive World Series title in 1993. During the season, the Jays had a lineup that fascinated me and also annoyed me just because of how deep and talented it was. And because of that, I wanted to make a video about this lineup as I'm very curious to know, how would you bat the 1993 Toronto Blue Jays? For this video, I'll show stats like batting average, home runs, RBS, which were the common stats that flashed on the TV screen back then. But I'm also going to show stats that are looked at more heavily in today's game, like on base percentage, on base plus slugging percentage, which is OPS, and OPS plus. Now the lineup I'm going to talk about is the lineup that Blue Jays manager Cito Gasson would generally fill out for the last two months of the season. But mainly this was a lineup in the playoffs against a right-handed pitcher, and the first name that I'm going to mention is Devon White. White was a tremendous center fielder, acquired in a trade from the Angels. The switch hitting White had tremendous speed, had some pop, but never had a great batting average or on base percentage. White's 1993 season was one of the better seasons he had statistically. But due to his speed, Devon White was kind of seen as a typical leadoff hitter, in which he was for Toronto for the 91, 92, and 1993 seasons. But on July 31st, the Blue Jays traded for Ricky Henderson, who was widely regarded as the greatest leadoff hitter ever. In 1993, Henderson had a typical great Ricky Henderson season for the A's, but when he came over to Toronto, his production was not typical Ricky Henderson production, but he could still get on base and still steal bases. He had 22 steals in 44 games for the Blue Jays that year. But anyways, Henderson would be the new leadoff man, but Cito Gasson wanted to stick with Devon White near the top and decided to bat him second, which pushed Roberto Alomar to batting third. The switch hitting Almar had a typical Roberto Almar season in 1993 while also stealing 55 bases. Now the former Padre was acquired in a trade, but he was never really seen as a power hitter but 1993 was the first season Almar hit double digit home runs. During his first three years in San Diego, Almar would find himself the top lineup batting either first or second. And I found it so interesting and unique at this time, where the top three hitters in a batting order could be labeled as prototypical leadoff hitters with a lot of speed. Now the cards lineup with Vince Coleman, Ozzie Smith, and Tom Herr was kind of before my time, but this was the first time where I saw a lineup like this. As for the rest of the lineup, batting fourth was Joe Carter, who's your typical late 80s, early 90s right-handed power hitter. And 1993 was a typical Joe Carter season, who came in a trade with Almar from San Diego. Now yes, the home run production is there, but maybe there's some stat heads who may not like his on-base percentage. But at this time, it was tough to argue to not bat Carter fourth behind those speedsters at the top of the order. Batting fifth was a smooth swing in lefty, John Olerud, who came up through the Blue Jays system, and he had a career year in 1993, leading the American League in doubles, batting average, on-base percentage, OPS, and OPS+. These were tremendous numbers for Olerud, but typically Olerud hit around 300, and had about a 400 on base percentage and would slug 20 home runs a season. Nonetheless, Olerud was quite the number 5 hitter for the Blue Jays. Batting 6 was Paul Molitor, and being a White Sox fan and watching the White Sox and Blue Jays in the 1993 ALCS, and this really annoyed me because like after the 4th or 5th hitters, you kind of start to see a decline in offensive talent, but it's so annoying to see how deep this Blue Jays lineup was, and so annoying to see Paul Molitor, a great hitter, bat number 6. Now Molitor, who was signed as a free agent, had a typical Paul Molitor season, and he also stole 22 bases this season. But to start the season, Molitor, he'd bat third, but with the acquisition of Ricky Henderson, Molitor would be mostly moved to six. And with the left-handed starter on the mound, Molitor would bat third and Almar then would be moved down to six. Then batting seventh was a switch hitting Tony Fernandez. He came over in a trade from the New York Mets. And this was a time when shortstops, they weren't really seen as a position with massive offensive production. And I saw Tony as a really solid hitter being near above the 300 mark while he was with the Padres and also prior with the Blue Jays. Now with the Padres, he was batting leadoff, but 300 was like that special mark for a hitter. But it was quite nice to have a 300 hitter who was above average at getting on base, batting 7th. Then batting 8th and 9th was Ed Sprague and Pat Borders. Sprague did hit 36 home runs for the Blue Jays in 1996, and Borders was the 1992 World Series MVP for Toronto. During the mid to late 2010s, there was kind of this movement to have the player with their best OPS bat 2nd and attempt to get that player more at bats during the course of the season with possibly someone on base. And uniquely, that got me thinking about this Blue Jays team. Now, this isn't a video to necessarily point out what Cito Gaston did wrong, as he did in the World Series with Toronto, but it got me curious to wonder how stat heads or other people who view analytics would bat this lineup. Would they move up Olerud and Molitor and perhaps move down White and Carter or something like that? But anyway, Cito Gaston knew his team and knew how to manage it, and it worked. But comment below because I'm curious. I'm very curious to see how would you fill out the lineup card for the 1993 Toronto Blue Jays? Real quick, I just want to thank all those who have supported 90 Sports Nostalgia. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and check out the links below for Patreon and merch. Thank you so much.